Alright, so I uh, just got back from uh, Spectrum Anodizing in uh, Muskego, Wisconsin. Anyway, <clears throat> they did a pretty good job. Uh, I still have to press the pins in, uh, but she's pretty much done. Pretty happy with the finish. Uh, looks really good. Uh, it's pretty even. There's a few worn spots uh, on the corners, but that may have just been from the way they had it set up. I don't know. But anyway, overall, the finish looks pretty consistent. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll take another video once I get the pins pressed in there. Alright, so uh, finally getting it all set up. Uh, the pins have been pressed in. Um, I just uh, located it, so it locates uh, X and Y right here and then Z on here. Um, I also <clears throat> just want to show what I did here. Um, I just uh, put the vacuum gauge and a regulator uh, right here on the table. So, I can just turn it on whenever I want. Anyway, uh, let's show it work real quick. Vacuum gauge is doing pretty good. Uh, pulling about 29 inches. So it just goes right on there. vacuum. It's a little noisy. I might put a smaller vacuum gauge on there or a vacuum uh, a venturi pump on there. The one I've got on there um, is a little bit loud and not quite necessary. I mean it's got way more than enough vacuum for this guy. Uh, so as you see it uh, turned out pretty good. Um, the thread milling worked really well. I've never done thread milling with Fusion 360 before, but writing the code for it was was uh, pretty easy. Uh, so it's held on there pretty good. When it's sucked down, I mean, there's no movement, no play, nothing like that at all. Uh, I did also, I modified, um, like I said, I moved the gauge off of the uh, the, the pallet changer itself. Um, cause if you, as you can see, you wouldn't be able to see it all the time. Uh, so some of the stuff hangs off the front. So I just moved it down over here, so you can just turn it on with this ball valve. You can adjust the uh, airflow. I've been keeping it at about 75. Uh, that pulls about 28 uh, inches, so uh, pretty satisfied with that. Uh, that's more than enough drawdown for, for just about anything. And then also made this guy here. Uh, it holds uh, 1 8 inch um, O-ring stock that I got from uh, McMaster and I've got six little holes on here so I can take screws in and out and use different areas at the same time or at different times whatever I can just fixture more than one thing I thought that might be convenient so far I've only used this one hole and, and just held a few things down as test parts <clears throat> all the uh, the pallets will just have these the uh, for the for the larger pallets I'll just put the sleeves in at the furthest holes and then the closer holes, these are just oversized by 50 thousandths. Uh, just that way the, uh, the extra pins that are on the pallet changer uh, will, will locate and, and have somewhere to go. But uh, I'm pretty pleased with everything. I've just got in another sheet of aluminum today and I'll start making some smaller pallets because most of the stuff I'm going to do is probably on uh, the 6 by 12 inch pallet option that I built for the table. So I'll keep everybody updated on that. And then, uh, but that's it. Turned out pretty good. Not disappointed at all. Definitely better than spending, you know, three grand or whatever it is on the uh, on the Mighty Byte system. So, pretty pleased.